Welcome back to the Indie Boys Racing Podcast. Burnout Sports, Marion Phoenix. We're here. My name is Tristan Greider with my co-hosts, Justin Cox, Daniel Cheney. It's going to be a great episode today, guys. We're going to talk all about the Darlington drama. We saw a lot of playoff guys just go up literally in flames. And we're going to talk about the Thirsty Threes, third victory of the season. And also talk about Max Verstappen's fourth GP win in a row. But first, let's see how the co-hosts are doing. Jay, how are you doing today, buddy? Man, I am a phenomenal i must say so um yeah (laughs) i guess um really i don't know i guess phenomenal that's all i can say um i didn't really get to watch much of the races this weekend i had a very very busy weekend this past weekend so that was fun but i wish i got to check out some of the races because darlington looked like it was an amazing race so but yeah so i don't know daniel uh, I'm doing all right. So I was able to watch at least some of all of the races. Uh, so I watched the second half, I think, of the F1 race. I watched all of IndyCar, and I watched the last 30 laps of NASCAR, or for Cup, at least, and I think probably similar for Xfinity. Um, I thought it was a good weekend of racing um, for the most part. I'm interested to hear what you guys think on certain things. I'm just ready to get into this. Let's get into it. Yeah, and you know, before we get into it, it's football season, boys! (laughs) Let's freaking go. So, two days as we're filming from this episode. As this episode is going live, it's going to be Bills, Rams. It's going to be a good freaking year. I drafted (laughs) my boy, Jonathan Taylor, with the first pick. Colts Nation, we're winning the South this year. It's not going to be that hard to win the South this year, but hey, we've got it on locks, but also race cars. Am I right? Let's talk about these race winners for the week. (laughs) Uh, At Darlington, Noah Gregson uh, won Xfinity Cup Series. Eric Jones wins his second Southern 500, a playoff spoiler there um, for the first race of the season of the NASCAR playoffs. Um, and lights at Portland, we saw Ben Peterson get his first um, GP win for lights. That's super awesome for him, seeing as he's probably going to be in IndyCar next season. Um, IndyCar, we saw Scott McLaughlin get his thirsty third win of the year. And then the podium at F- <laughs> in F1 for the Dutch GP was Max Verstappen, George Russell, and Charles Leclerc. Luckily, no one was burnt by any, uh, what was that, that they threw on the track? A, a flare. flare. Oh, those yeah. flares. Yeah, the flare yeah. thingies. Yeah, no one got was, burnt by any flares. That was making me mad. Um, and luckily, no one got burnt inside the race car, as Kevin Harvick had a pretty scary um, uh, fire incident that he is still pissed Ooh. off about. We'll talk about that um, a little bit later in the oh, show. We had but a first, fire yeah, in IndyCar too. Yeah, we had fire. Yeah, we had fire. Who's the fire in IndyCar? Connor Daly's car caught on fire. Oh so, yeah, yeah, yeah. He when he was coming bit. out of pit lane. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. they just like made him like park it and was like. I guess get out. <laughs> yeah, Damn. I forget who was reporting it, but he was the guy that um Tony interviewed on uh the IndyCar show. Uh, he was like Col- Connor Daly, he's on fire, guys. Like, and he was just like Connor <laughs> Daly has third degree burns. I was like, no, like he just got hot in the race car. <laughs> yeah, but like his car did catch on fire. But as always, guys, started off transition motorsport media. All right, let's start with some Xfinity Series news today. Derek Griffith is going to return to Sam Hunt Racing. He's going to be there this weekend at Kansas. He's also going to be at Talladega in a couple weeks. So good to see Griffith returning to the 26. Brandon Brown, guys, has found sponsorship. It's going to be Zero F, um, FG Energy, and they're going to return to sponsor him at Talladega. So Brandon Brown will be back in the 68th this season. But it'll be at Talladega where he won last year. Cup Series news. Uh, Justin Alexander will not return to RCR in 2023 as Austin Dillon's crew chief. We will see a new crew chief for Austin Dillon in 2023. Justin Alexander, I believe, has been Austin Dillon's crew chief since 2017. Jeez, so that's crazy. <laughs> that, that's a long tenure <laughs> of a a crew long, chief there. That's a long. And then my biggest news is this came out today. Adam Stern has reported that there are only two teams still in contention for Kyle Busch. And those teams are 
Richard Childress Racing, and 2311 Racing. This could mean that Joe Gibbs is officially out of contention along with Colic. Kyle Busch has said that he is going to be making an announcement in the coming days about his contract situation. Colleg is not making their driver announcement until the beginning of October. So that pretty much means that Kyle Busch is probably not going to Colleg Racing. I'm not but buying it. I'm not buying here, it. I'm not buying, I'm not it, buying it. I I really don't think Kyle Busch is going to Colleg, man. But Listen, uh, this is what he before. should. I don't think he should. But I, I just, it makes business sense. I'm going SHR till I die. Don't care. The thing that I'm most surprised about is that Joe Gibbs Racing is officially out of contention for Kyle Busch. Um, but the two teams that Adam Stern reported on are Richard Childress Racing and 2311 Racing. Now, 2311, I'm going to talk about them first. <laughs> Kurt Busch is injured. And it is a very likely that we will never see Kurt Busch in a cup car again which is very sad seeing as we're returning to kansas this weekend uh where kurt bush possibly won his final cup series race in the nascar cup series um there's going to be an open seat next season for 2311 racing um and who better to fill that seat than the two-time champion kyle bush plus you wouldn't really have to change a lot of the name plates on there it still could just say k bush I don't true. Know. um true but well really toyota would just say bush if, if kurt bush is out next season that's true it would say bush <laughs> but they still have h burton in the cup series um on harrison burton's car so yeah I mean, they do that is kind of weird interesting that's weird right but 2311 racing i feel like that's the best scenario um for toyota um seeing as he wouldn't be with joe gibbs racing anymore kyle bush still stays in the toyota development program and that means KBM would still be a truck series team um, with Toyota. That would be the best case scenario for Toyota. However, what I think is going to happen is that we're going to see a contract buyout for Tyler Reddick for 2023. Tyler Reddick is going to go to 2311 Racing a year early, and we're going to see Kyle Busch in the eight car next season. That is what I personally believe is going to happen. These two uh, above me, or I guess next to me, below me, Jay's normally <laughs> below me, uh, they both think that Kyle Busch is going uh, either the Collig or SHR. Um, I'm pulling. I'm all for seeing the world burn, and I want to see RCR uh, with Kyle Busch next season because I just want to see if uh, Junior fans are going to be pissed, <laughs> and I want to see yeah. if uh, if um. Dude, that would uh, make the world melt. Oh my god! Think about it. Think about it. <laughs> Kyle Busch goes to drive for Richard Childress Racing, the team where Dale Earnhardt drove his pretty much entire career to drive the eight car. Hell would freeze where over. Dale, Dale <laughs> Earnhardt saying. Jr. drove over <laughs> half of his career. But, like, but Tristan, but Tristan, do you really think there's going to be a contract buyout of the 2022 NASCAR champion? Okay, listen here, Eric Estep. I don't think that uh, Reddick... <laughs> it's going to happen. It's going to happen. This is the year. I feel it. I feel it. Didn't, didn't you pick Chase Elliott to win your championship? Yeah, because I, I want the points. <laughs> okay. I yeah. do too, so but it's okay. There we go, guys. Um, That's all the Motorsport Media news that we have for NASCAR. I'm going to move this one over to F1 for Jay. Talk to us. We have some driver signings, bro. Oh, yeah. It's crazy. So, apparently... The uh, contract renewal board, uh, renewal board for the FIA um, looked into Oscar Piastri's contract claim with McLaren and Oscar Piastri. P ah, God, I can't talk. Sorry, guys. Um, Oscar Piastri will drive for McLaren in 2023. McLaren er, Alpine is still very upset with all this, but you know it might work out for them in the long run. Though, in my opinion, um, because moving on to the next thing, um, Colton Herta is supposedly if he can get an exemption on his super license points because if he finishes where he finishes right now at the end of the season, he will have 35 of 40 li uh, super license points because um, he'll get three from finishing eight this season in the IndyCar Championship. Um, and right now he has 32, of course. So if he can get the exemption and they give him that little leeway for him to get to F1, then we're going to see Colton Herta drive for AlphaTauri in 2023. 
And uh-huh. that's what's crazy. <laughs> and that's what's crazy because <laughs> how this works for Alpine is they can get Pierre Gasly. I forgot in like the silly season rumors and stuff that Pierre had an open contract to where if he was offered something better, he could leave. I completely forgot about that because I made like a little silly season sheet and I put him as a lock driver because I saw that he resigned, but I f- completely forgot the contract claims. Oh, so, yeah, the clause. Yeah. So, yeah, that's crazy. Um, yeah. <laughs> that's crazy. Uh-huh. Good morning. Um, <laughs> so he said good morning so interesting stuff there um final thing uh nicholas devries gets to drive for aston martin and fp1 at monza this weekend so very fun for nick devries and very cool to see him get a chance in an f1 car so um, i have i saw this meme on twitter and it was me oh, trying. Oh, I know me. what you're about to say. <laughs> and it was a Nick DeVries meme. And it was <laughs> me uh, putting different email accounts in to get the free trial. And it was Nick DeVries in a, in a Alfa Romeo, a Williams, and a um, Aston Martin <laughs> team polo. Bro. Made me laugh so hard. Oh, I got one more thing. I'm sorry. So, apparently, though, Mick Schumacher is going to be leaving the Ferrari Driver Academy at the end of the season. Or he may Ooh. already have left the Driver Academy, but he's still with Haas, and he's going to completely cut ties with Haas at the end of the season. So that still leaves a little little question for where Ricardo and Mick are going to land, because as well, Ricardo is also open to being a reserve driver in F1, which I personally don't see that happening, because Ricardo is nor is an older guy and typically most reserve drivers are the younger guys such as piastri um or as such as piastri was is what i should say um but it'll be interesting because this f1 silly season is going to be very crazy so i saw a i think it was something on twitter that i saw i think it was ricardo talking to Bottas, and it was like i think it was that it said that he was talking to Bottas, and he said, "I'm gonna this take next a year. year." He said, "I'm gonna take a year, yeah, and then I'll be back year, in 24." Back in 24. Yeah, That's I what that. I saw. And so, as of right now, I'm saying Ricardo is not gonna be in F1 next season as a full time driver. Um, but I'm sure we'll get to that road later in the episode. Right. So I don't know. We'll see. Um, that's all I have for F1. So Daniel, if you wanted to cover some of the IndyCar news. <laughs> You bet your sweet bippy I do. (laughs) Um, All right, so starting off with Road to Indy. So first off, I just want to shout out to, I don't know if it's Lewis or Louis Foster. Um, I'm not, I don't watch every single Road to Indy race. Um, But congrats to, I'll say Louis, Louis Foster, and Michael D'Orlando for winning their respective championships. Phenomenal drives by both of them. Competitive seasons, obviously, like, there were a lot of contenders in both of those series. Um, so I was really excited to see that both of them get, uh, won theirs because they're both extremely talented. And I hope to see them move up, um, both Foster in lights and then D Orlando in pros, or Indie Pro, not, yeah. Sorry, my brain's all over the place right it's now. You're good. Yeah, I, like I had to think. Right I was too. like, is it Indie Pro, like, <laughs> USF Pro? Like, I, did, I had to think for a second. Um, and then also... So this is Indy Lights, so technically Road to Indy, but um, the more prominent side of things. First off, Hunter McElray, friend of the show, he's going to return to Andretti Autosports in 2023. Would we yeah. be seeing a championship push? Who knows? Oh, yeah, we are. I mean, he was in contention for a solid chunk of this year, so I wouldn't be surprised to see a leap. Mm-hmm. Um, and then second, so... Jamie Chadwick, it has been announced that she will be testing an Andretti Autosports Indy Lights car. Crazy. I have been pushing for this all year. Jay knows. Yeah. I have I have talked with him about this in person. I talked I talked with you about it with Joe at IMS. Yeah. I was yeah. like, I, I want this to happen. <laughs> it's like at least a test. I need to sh- see what she can do. And it looks like it's really close to happening because she is slated to test with Andretti. Does this mean she'll take over an Andretti spot? Is there a spot that she can take? Who knows? Will they be expanding to more than four cars? I don't know. 
I don't know what the plan is, but she will be testing in Indy Lights, which that is big news for just motorsports because obviously Jamie Chadwick is a pretty well-known name um, in open wheel racing. And a big thing is people want her to like get that push to get more recognition for how good she is. And this also, if she moves into Indy Lights while she's been like getting all this push for her to go to F3 or F2, I think it could elevate the IndyCar developmental side, the road to Indy, and show that it's just as competitive, if not more competitive, than the Formula One side of things. That's just my personal take. That's what that's what made me excited about yeah. this whole news. I want her um, to get a shot at least F1, but I mean, I want her to get a shot anywhere because uh, yeah, like whatever, regardless of what people may think about her, I still feel like she is a phenomenal driver. So. Um, I don't know. So I, I would like to see her at least in a ride somewhere. So mm. for sure. But yeah. I, I don't want to see her become one of those cases where it's just a big what if where yeah, she's so yeah, talented yeah. in all these other series, but because we've never put her in the bigger series or at least like the step ladders to these bigger series, we'll never know how she Let's would experiment. do. Let's experiment. I think putting her in Indy lights <laughs> for a year or two. And then if she excels moving her up to IndyCar for a season or two or however, however long that might be, I think that's great for IndyCar. Um, I'm personally really excited to see how this might pan out. It could be something, it could be nothing. See, I just hope that we don't see another Haley Deegan situation with Jamie Chadwick. Um, however, Jamie Chadwick wins. Haley Deegan wasn't really winning before she really moved up. Um, and now we're going to see Deegan in her third straight Truck Series season. Um, and I feel like if Deegan doesn't do anything in Trucks next season, it's probably going to be um goodbye um but i really hope that we're not rushing jamie chadwick um like uh motorsports rushed Haley deegan um so that's just what i'm saying there i but feel like hopefully... honestly though for Haley deegan she should have skipped trucks in my opinion i feel like her going to trucks was kind of a bad idea yeah because the thing know. about Haley deegan is it wasn't just her moving up into series it was her like completely changing the style of the yeah. series that's yeah. my trucks, take on why she hasn't really cars. worked out. The trucks handle yeah. probably way different than the cars, in my opinion. I, I think they're at least going to give her one season in Xfinity, and if she's bad in Xfinity, then it'll probably fizzle out. Yeah. But yeah, I don't, I don't think, I don't think Ford that... especially is ready to give up. Yeah. Well, she brings in so much money, and the exactly. crazy thing is, is that we're seeing drivers skip trucks entirely. Yeah, that's um, what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Like, I feel like, like she Sam Mayer is a huge example. I mean, yeah. sure, we saw Sam Mayer win in the truck series, but Sam Mayer skipped the truck series. So did Riley Herbst. So did Sammy Smith, who's running a lot of races right now. Um, we're seeing these drivers skip truck series, and they're having great success mm -hmm. in the Xfinity series. Great success. <laughs> um, but it's, it's like happening. Like, Sammy Smith freaking almost won two weeks ago and at Watkins Glen and I thought he was going to win and Riley Herbst having the best season of his career yeah. uh Sam Mayer is in the playoffs like just saying Josh Berry like Can't these are all guys that skipped the truck series and just how it goes I don't know yeah. well speaking of NASCAR next bit of IndyCar news uh Jimmy Johnson phenomenal segue um, I mean, <laughs> um, Jimmy Johnson is hoping for a full-time run in 2023 in IndyCar. Um, I don't know if this will happen. I don't know if it should happen. I don't know if it's going to happen. Um, it really just depends on funding at this point because I don't think Chip Ganassi's... No. I don't think he wants to just, like, kick him out if he still wants to go and he can still fund a ride. Because realistically, like, he's still got chances to win on Opals every now and then and he's a big name so i think as long as he wants to be around that he can still occasionally at least on ovals prove that he belongs around i think he's going to be an indy car at least on a part-time basis i don't know what that's going to look like but we'll see um it's just rumors as of now nothing's been confirmed but it is kind of a question mark for if you will be part time or full time. The Jimmy flag. Um, That's funny. Wave then, the flag, boys. <laughs> and then last bit of potential IndyCar news. If this Colton Herta deal goes through and his points 
they they allow him to get the super license and he moves to F1, there's going to be an open seat at Andretti Autosports. What's going to happen with that? I don't know, because when the rumors of this happening last season, or I don't know if it was during the season or after the season, but we all know there were rumors about this happening with Andretti potentially moving to F1 to be the 11th team. Um, while all this stuff was happening, um, there was an easy answer, because Kyle Kirkwood had not signed anywhere, and he was still an Andretti guy, and everybody knew he was eventually going to go to Andretti. It was just a matter of if he would join that year with an opening seat if Herta left or waiting the year like he has to move to the 27. Right. Um, obviously, there's not really a Kyle Kirkwood right now for them. And I don't know what they'll do with that. Um, there'll be There have been rumors with the 29 when that was kind of coming out that they were looking for options with the 29 that Oliver Askew might make a return to IndyCar and take an Andretti seat. I don't know if they would do that, especially with it being the 26, because I feel like um, the 26, especially just the fact that it was driven by Colton Herta, that's kind of their main, that has been their main focus the past two seasons. Right. Um, and sure. I don't know if they would want somebody that, like, nothing against Oliver Askew, <laughs> but for the most part, he's not really viewed as a top guy. He's kind he's of a guy that was he's yeah. get pushed to Formula E. I mean, he's he, he was he was forced yeah. out of the series. Like that's that's not my problem with him. Um, I think he should still be an Indy car, but I don't know if a top tier top tier ride because Andretti kind of depends on the year. I don't really know <laughs> if he should get a top top tier ride. Right. Um, that's just based on Which is stuff fair. that has happened. Like I, I just don't know. It's a very questionable thing um they could theoretically move up somebody for indie lights um, with either stingray rob matt brabham christian rasmussen technically they still could for hunter mcelray but i don't know if contracts can i don't just, know i, I, I don't know how that works i don't know if i see rasmussen moving up either uh just i'm just yeah i'm just saying people under working. contract to andretti yeah. like they are technically options could see um, like the Devlin situation with what happened. Um, yeah, Devlin got moved up early. But I don't if know. all of those, out of all those guys that I could see moving up, I think it would probably be Matt Brabham, just because most experience out of all of those guys. Plus, he's the only guy in the entire Indy Lights field that has IndyCar experience. Um, so you probably would want Matt Brabham in that seat. Plus, he brings a lot of sponsorship. So I would probably i think matt brabham which should be your first choice second pick second choice should pretty much be stingray rob um if he doesn't sign with somewhere sign somewhere else in the offseason i mean he's still a contender for that aj4814 um honestly for both aj4 um rides right now because we don't know if uh Kel is resigning in the four yet um there's a lot of places that we could see these guys going but i think matt brabham should be the first option for that 26 I, or hey I, maybe I we see andretti do that. a part-time car maybe we see them do a part-time car with all of their indie lights guys i could see that being a thing too. i i personally think their first option is calling up dale coin racing saying listen can we buy out david malukas like if you're a honda team that that should be your top priority in my opinion yeah. because he's being in a middle of the pack him. team he he's had like especially the second half of the season Pretty much from the Indy 500 on, he has consistently proven that he has that star potential. And he went from fourth in the rookie race to second. He's five points back. Like, and that's crazy. I really hope he wins rookie. Another game. thing, another thing to note. Um, I just completely forget what I was going to say. <laughs> that. You gonna talk about Meyer Shank maybe with one of the Meyer no, Shank guys? I don't even know what I was about to say. Um, Start talking about something else. Back. Start talking about something else, and I'll come back to you. This is not an epic moment. Um, the what was I gonna say? It was something about Malukas. <laughs> Am I having a stroke? Well, you're I talking about you were talking about him going to Andretti. Like yeah, no, no, I know. I know. I just don't remember where I was going with that. 
I got you. Yeah, I had a talking point. You know, we're just going to move on because I don't know. All right. <laughs> yeah. Yep. All right. That's Motorsport <laughs> Media, guys. Sorry I ended on a little bit of a low note there. If, uh, I don't know what happened to there. Yeah. But, yeah, that's Motorsport Media, guys. Let's go ahead and go into race weekend. Okay, guys. Race weekend. Let's start with the Xfinity Series uh, where Daniel Cheney has more pain as an RCR fan. Um, oh, I just want to talk about Sheldon Creed dominated this race like it was Sheldon Creed and Kyle Larson pretty much the entire time they come to the white flag they're side by side Kyle Larson sends it in pushes Creed up the track pushes Creed into the wall um and we see Noah Gregson come out of nowhere and pass both of them on the back straightaway Larson blows a tire and Creed sends it like Denny Hamlin did a couple of years ago, riding the wall in Darlington, and it almost worked. It almost worked. <laughs> he and... pulled a Kyle Larson against Kyle Larson. Yeah, yeah, for real, he really did, and it almost worked. Sadly, did not though. Um, and Noah Gregson wins his third race of the season. My my question though for you guys: Will Sheldon Creed make the Xfinity Series playoffs? He has two more chances. Um, where is he at on the bubble? So let me check points right now. Um, after he had a very good finish now, uh, with his best finish of the year being second last week. Um, so right now, in the playoff standings, Creed is thirteenth. He's sixteen back to Landon Castle. Oh, he's in then. I don't think Castle's making the playoffs. Right now, the playoff bubble right now um, for guys that are not locked in, uh, Sam Mayer, Riley Herbst, Daniel Hemrick, Brian Sieg, and Landon Castle are guys that are in on points. Uh, on the bubble, we have Sheldon Creed, Brandon Brown, Anthony Alfredo, Myatt Snyder, and Jeb Burton. Hmm. Um, so Jeremy Clements uh, has officially been removed from that um, thing, uh, that bio, since he... Uh, what do you think, Tristan? What do you think? I think Sheldon Creed's making the playoffs. And I think he's going to push out uh, Daniel Hemrick because I think Hemrick's going to have a bad couple of races. And I think Sieg, Castle, and Creed make the playoffs. Um, uh, but I don't even know if Ryan, Ryan Sieg can make the playoffs because I have Myatt Snyder in my playoffs because I have Myatt Snyder winning Bristol in a couple weeks. Oh, shoot. Um, so I really don't know. But I could see Creed definitely making the playoffs along with um, Snyder. What do you think, Daniel? I, I don't think Castle's making the playoffs. I've been very honest about that. Um, I think Creed either gets in by points or winning possibly this weekend. I mean, Kansas is a great track for Sheldon Creed in the truck series, especially. So I mean I And think I think he's gonna good. I think he's gonna be mad that he wasn't able to pull off that win last week. Next. So I think he's gonna full send it out there. Yeah, that's a big one. Jay, who what do you think? Well, at first I was going to be like, you know, I'll be different and say no. But then you brought up Daniel Hemrick, and I was like, yeah, I'm just going to say Creed's going to make it. So I mean, here's the thing. Daniel Hemrick is currently 54 points up on the cut line. Mm. But I don't know why I see Hemrick having a bad couple of weeks. It's possible. And him getting pushed out. I could see Landon Castle winning in the next two weeks. I could see Landon Castle winning this week at Kansas. I could see it happening. Um... Am I going to pick Castle this week? No, but uh, <laughs> like no. I can just see that happening. But you also have guys that are on the cut line that are a little bit farther back. Right now, four, tied for 14th in points right now is Brandon Brown and Anthony Alfredo. Um, Brown, I feel like, could be the guy not to make it out of this group because Brown's currently running part-time for McLeod and part-time for his own team. So I don't necessarily see, necessarily see that. Alfredo, maybe. This is his first full-time season in Xfinity. Um, his second ever full time season in a NASCAR cups in a NASCAR series. Um, Myatt Snyder and Jeb Burton. Out of those four guys, Brown, Alfredo, Snyder, Burton, you can't tell me that the best guy that doesn't have the best chance is Myatt Snyder. He has the best chance out of all four of those guys. Jordan Anderson Racing has been super consistent this year. Um, the best season of their career. I could just see it happening. I could see Myatt Snyder making the playoffs out of those four. You know what? No. Creed won't make it. You don't Creed. think Creed's going to make it? Who's yeah. going to make it? Right, is Castle going to make it? Yeah, it'll be how it is right now. Okay. 
Good. Good prediction. Hey. That, that hurts saying. a little bit. That hurts a little bit right Sorry. here. Jay. You have, I'm just being you have Austin Hill. <laughs> Shut up. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> come on. Three out of your four RCR boys made the playoffs this year. Like, you can calm down. Yeah, anyway. but one of one of them is the one I don't care much for. <laughs> That's true. True. It's true. Daniel Nothing against care. him. Nothing against him. I don't care much for Pappy's boy. I, I don't even, like, dislike him. It's just I don't have a He's personal connection. I'm dead. All right, let's go, Cup. So, guys, a terrible weekend for a lot of Cup Series drivers. Um, and this was also a really bad one for pretty much every playoff driver because we didn't see a playoff driver win this weekend. Eric Jones uh, came out of nowhere and stole the Southern 500, his third Cup Series career win, the 200th win for the 43 car. And the first time the 43 has won at Darlington since 1965. That's crazy. <laughs> I also saw a stat. It's the first time since 1999 that the 43 and the 3 have won in back-to-back -back weekends. Uh, last time we I saw that was that, with John yeah. Edgeretti and Dale Earnhardt. I reposted that on my Instagram story. You guys can follow me at Tristan Greider underscore. Anyway, that's my plug. <laughs> so, this is what's going on, guys. Playoff standings right now. Joey Logano, William Byron, Denny Hamlin, Chris Bell... Tyler Reddick, Ryan Blaney, Kyle Larson, Ross Chastain, Chase Elliott, Alex Bowman, Daniel Suarez, and Kyle Busch. That's your 12. I got to talk about some of these guys. Yeah, for now. I got to talk to you guys about some of these results of playoff drivers. We're going to start from the bottom. Chase Elliott barely ran in this race, uh, crashing in stage one after um, – Losing it, pretty much, and collecting another playoff driver with him, that being Chase Briscoe. Chase Elliott finishes last this week. Finishing in 33rd is Kevin Harvick after his car literally burst into flames. Now, this isn't the first time this season we've seen cars burst into flames, and I started to think to myself, they've all been Fords. Um, Chris Buescher was the first one we saw catch on fire. That was actually at the track that we were at, at Indianapolis, when Chris Buescher's car just caught on fire. Yeah. Um, literally the next week at New Hampshire... Um, Cole Custer catches on fire. Yeah. Um, so we saw back-to-back -back weeks where we saw a car catch on fire. This is now the third car we've seen just burst into flames randomly, that being Kevin Harvick, who is the biggest name out of all of those. Visibly angry. So He had the most to say about it, too. <laughs> oh, yes, he did. He <laughs> called the next-gen car crappy-ass parts. Yeah. And <laughs> so, I don't know. It's not the first driver we've heard talk about it. 31st. Martin Truex Jr. was leading this race, had a water pump failure. And then another guy that was leading this race, with 20 laps to go, Kyle Busch blows an engine from the lead, giving me memories of Charles Leclerc in F1. I mean, terrible situation there. 27th finisher was Chase Briscoe, multiple laps down. Uh, 20th and 18th and 20th was Ross Chastain and Daniel Suarez. And then... All the, the other playoff drivers outside the top 10 were Austin Cedric in 16th, 13th with Ryan Blaney, 12th with Kyle Larson. Now, let's read this top 10. Eric Jones gets the win. Denny Hamlin, second. Tyler Reddick, third. Joey Logano, fourth. Christopher Bell, fifth. That's a pretty solid top five there. Sixth place, Michael McDowell. Your year. Um, seventh place is Brad Kozlowski, his best finish for RFK. Um... He finished where I thought he was going to finish all season in that seventh position. I thought we would see the RFK six in the like around the seventh to tenth area all season, but I was wrong. Eighth place was William Byron. Ninth place was Bubble Wallace in the 45, and tenth place was Alex Bowman. Now, which playoff drivers do you guys think are safe out of this round, and which ones are in trouble? I'll go first. Are you going to go, Daniel? Uh, Jay, well, you go ahead. Okay. Yeah, you go. You go. So, me personally, I think <laughs> this 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 bubble is very tight right now because I think this is the closest we've ever had the field be in stage points slash like like playoff points. Oh, for sure. Because I think anybody from Tyler Reddick on back can get knocked out. Because. 23 point cushion, that's not a lot if you think about it. Because that's, you get that's one bad stage. That's two yeah. bad stages. Yeah. Like that's Yeah, that's yeah. That's not very good. I think
Christopher Bell might be right on the edge where he's may even if he has a bad race and he can still bounce back the next week, he'd be fine. But ah, it's weird to say. I don't think I think the only person that's really safe is Joey Logano, honestly. Joey Logano and William Byron. Thirty eight and thirty like they have they're up plus thirty eight, plus thirty two. Those are the only two that are safe in my opinion. Maybe Denny. And I think but, all of us have Byron advancing to the round of twelve. I can't remember if uh I, I think Daniels has, has Byron going the farthest out of all of us, but um, I don't think, I don't we think have... I have him go. No, I think I have him uh, making it to round twelve, and then he's out. You have yeah, him, I can't Tristan. Remember. I have him, Daniel. You have him making him to the round of twelve. Okay, cool. Yeah. So we all have Byron making make it to round twelve. I knew of a lot of people that had Byron getting out in the first round. So, Correct. uh, that's um. So I think Joey's safe. I think Byron's safe, and I think Denny is safe. But Drivers that are in trouble. The rest on back are in trouble. Yeah. I'll say my drivers that I think are in trouble really quick. I think that Chase Briscoe is in trouble. I think that he doesn't have a track left on the schedule that he's good at in this round. That's fair. Like, Kansas, not really a Chase Briscoe-style track. I could see him doing well on. I mean, let me look at his finish at kansas earlier this season um back in may chase briscoe finished uh kansas in where he finished yeah 24th this is not a chase briscoe track um and then go to bristol he's not really a bristol guy either so i don't know if this could be a chase briscoe weekend i think he's if it's trouble. dirt bristol if it's dirt bristol if it's dirt, but it's not dirt. <laughs> yeah. And then another driver I think that's in trouble is his teammate with Kevin Harvick. Yeah. Now, I think that he could climb his way out of there, um, as we'll see in my predictions later this week, uh, later this episode. But I think Harvick's in trouble. I'm starting to get references in my mind to 2020, and I don't want that to happen. So I think that the SHR boys are in trouble. Me personally. Daniel. Oh, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Jay. Me personally, yeah, you're with, good, you're good. okay. Uh, me personally, with um, Chase Briscoe and Kevin Harvick, I had them both making it out of the round of sixteen, but I had them getting knocked out immediately the next round together. But it looks like that's moving up around. <laughs> so I don't know. I, mean, I have Harvick making it into the round of uh, twelve. I think I actually have Harvick in the round of eight, but um. I have Briscoe being a first round exit. Three out of the four guys that are currently below the cut line, I have missing. Nice. Um, the only other guy that I have missing that's not up there is um, I had um, Alex Bowman getting first rounded. Yeah. So um, I'm pretty sure. Uh, Jay, you could check that for me, but I'm pretty sure I have Bowman getting first rounded. Uh, I'm pretty sure you do. No, you have him as the you picked him as the last guy in the round of twelve. Oh, who did I have missing? Um, I believe you had um, Austin Dillon. Um, Sorry, I have Bell missing. I don't know why I said Bell. You have Austin Dillon, Bell. Yeah, I don't know why you said Bell. <laughs> Austin Dillon, Angle Bell, Cindric, and I, I believe. I the freaking round of eight. I believe the last I one. Have- Bell making it to the championship four because I think he's a dark horse to win the thing. I can see it. That's my take. It. That's my hot take. Who's your last guy you got missing? Probably Cindric. I said Cindric. Cindric. Oh. Bo- Cindric. Dylan Bell, Briscoe. B- Dylan. Oh, and Briscoe. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. Yeah. That's but it. yeah. What about you, Daniel? What are you thinking? Who's safe? Who's not safe? Nobody's safe. That's my take. I don't I think take, anybody's think safe. Until after this race, um, because yeah, we saw Chase was... Elliott. Chase Elliott was in first by a hefty margin. He has one DNF. He drops eight spots. Yeah, that's why I said that. that I, that's Lugana. why I said that points bubble is so yeah. tight. I, no one's safe in yeah. my opinion. It's crazy. It, it ain't. It ain't finished till the old lady sings and <laughs> Joey Logano could have. He could have two DNFs for all I know, and Back. I can't predict that. I, like I genuinely don't know. We could see someone. We could see him, like someone like Joey Logano, like DNF maybe once, and then have like a really mid or like bad race um, in the last race. And then we could see someone 
who's in that bottom cutoff, like in Austin Dillon, potentially win at like Bristol. And that could offset some things. I don't think anybody's safe. I mean, I think that Logano is probably safe with this weekend. At uh, I don't have him winning this weekend at Kansas, but I could see uh, him winning this weekend. Um, I think Bell is safe, um, as we'll see in my predictions later. Um, but I just think that that could that could happen. But I don't know. My final thing: Eric Jones won this weekend, guys. He's our seventeenth winner. Of the NASCAR Cup Series season, I know what you're going to ask. Will we have? I know what you're going to ask. 18. 20. Will there be another? 20. 20? Okay, so now you got to name the three drivers that are going to win besides Bubba Wallace, because Bubba Wallace is one of them, for sure. Because I have Bubba winning at Talladega. Give me a second. <clears throat> I was drinking my water. Um. Agua. Stay hydrated. Me uh, agua, sir. Yeah. This episode is not sponsored. <laughs> Dasani water. No, Dasani's butt. <laughs> <laughs> I have Aquafina. I think, yeah, Aquafina. Yeah. Um, I, Man, I love see, her in show. <laughs> I see. Who else do I have winning? I can see. Bubba, of course. I can see. Christopher Busher. I can see, honestly, at one of like, one of the like, Talladega, basically Corey LaJoy. He or didn't even say Truex or Blaney. Or even that's Michael crazy. McDowell. He didn't even say he didn't even say Truex or Blaney, bro. That's true. That's crazy. I didn't even think about them to be honest. My 18th winner is probably them. gonna be <clears throat> Ryan Blaney. I forgot about. Um, I'm not gonna lie. But I think we're gonna have 19. Win- I think we're gonna have 19 winners. I think we see Truex go winless this season. And I think that we have Ryan Blaney and Bubba Wallace find victory lane. I think Blaney gets a win at possibly a yeah, uh, let me think. Um, I could see him winning at Texas. Yeah. Uh, since he won at Texas earlier this season, I could see Blaney bring home the Texas win at the start of the first round, at the start of the second round, right. and Bubba Wallace at Talladega, and then we get to 19 winners. Uh, Daniel, are we seeing another winner this season? Oh, like yeah, I mean. Again, Blaney, Truex, they both could win. Bubba can always win a super speedway. Um, Chris Buescher, he's, I feel like this season, he's always kind of had those weird weeks where, you know, he could come out of nowhere and win it. Just out of nowhere. Um, Same thing with Michael McDowell. There's still, what, one road? Do we just, is it just the Roval last road course? Yeah. Yeah, but there's also Homestead (laughs) Miami where he's great. And Las Vegas, where he's great. Not to yeah, mention Talladega. I mean, let's let's see. Um, That's why I said I said Michael McDowell too. I I could see Michael McDowell winning. I'm I would love to see Michael. Dude, you know how much I would want to see Michael McDowell. <laughs> I, I, I know. I know. I'd cry. I'd cry. I cried when he won the 500. <laughs> he said I cried. I mean, here's the thing. There's people that are just good on super speedways, and there's people that can just win out of nowhere, like randomly, like Eric Almarola. Facts. I feel like every now and then he just he just gets that one weird win. Right. Um, He's gonna have a couple. Justin more Haley is great on super cool. speedways. That's true. Facts. Um, Stenhouse work. good on super speedways. Ty Dillon good on super speedways. It's gonna be a toss up. I, I, that's why I yeah. say we get to twenty. It could be any of these people we're mentioning right now, in my opinion. That's why I say we get to twenty. So, you never just know. Saying. I'm just saying. Just saying. Just saying. Just saying. <laughs> just saying. Just How saying. How bad I, 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 can I be? I'm just anyway, uh, yeah. All right, enough with the NASCAR. You want to go F1, Jay? Uh, you want to sure. talk? Yeah, I can you talk. You want to talk? Um, I guess really. Uh, Netherlands kind of went how we kind of expected it to. Not gonna lie to you. Max, um, Max, Max, Super, Max, Max, Max. Super, people were having Max, a lot Max, of controversy Max, Super, Max. with the uh, AlphaTauri incident with um. With them bringing in uh, Yugi, then sending him back out, then bringing him back in, then sending him out, and he stopped on the track. People were kind of comparing that that could have been maybe like a like a loophole that they were trying to pull, maybe. Yeah. But I don't see Red Bull or AlphaTauri doing that for it was they were saying that it was for Max to win basically, but um, I don't see Red Bull doing that, especially with 
Max's championship lead and their constructors lead. <laughs> I highly doubt they would do that, <laughs> in my opinion. Because um, why would they want to throw that out of the uh, the uh, equation, basically? So, um, I highly doubt that. Um, but I do have two questions for you guys. Um, so, does Mercedes win a Grand Prix this season with either two drivers, Russell or Hamilton? Um, Tristan. Yeah, I think we definitely see George Russell getting to uh, a GP win this season. He's just been so consistent. However, the obvious answer would say would be to Lewis Hamilton. Um, I can't imagine a season where Lewis Hamilton doesn't win a race. And I don't want it to be this season. I could see it being this season. But I think we could see both one or the other. It's going to be either Russell gets a win or Hamilton gets a win. I believe this and, will be – if Lewis doesn't win this season, it will be the first season since uh, like 97 or 99 that either Michael Schumacher or Lewis Hamilton has not won a race. That's insane. <laughs> I also saw a stat that um, that uh, Max Verstappen is now officially 10th all-time in F1 laps led. Yeah. Yeah, he just moved in. Lewis but is first. I could, see it, I could see it being one or the other. Yeah. No, yeah, definitely. But I, I, me personally, I don't know. I, I don't know because it doesn't seem like they have the speed for the Red Bulls. They may have it for the Ferrari, but I don't think they have the speed for the Red Bull, in my opinion. I think this is going to be the Ferrari. Ferrari. Well, they, they have the speed for one Red Bull, just not the other one. Facts. I mean, shut I, your mouth. <laughs> you get over here and shut your mouth, boy. I'm sorry. I uh, I, uh, I did kind of diss on RCR earlier, so I guess that's payback. So yeah, I'll it's it's you. payback. It's payback. <laughs> what, do you um, think? what do you think, Daniel? Let me hear it. I think they could win, but I'm not going to put all my eggs into the basket saying they are going to win. Yeah. I think, oh, like, not every week, but I feel like probably about every other race they have, it looks like they absolutely can, and then they just don't. Yeah. Um, and so I think that they can, but I'm not going to say that they will. Uh, and if they do, I'll be really happy. But if they don't, I'm not going to be like, oh, darn, you know, like I called it that they would win and they didn't, because I don't know. It's It's one of those things where it just really depends week to week. Yeah. And I thought that they'd be more in contention sooner personally my opinion this weekend is probably their best chance because monza has produced some surprise winners in the past few seasons with pierre gasly and daniel ricardo last season so um we'll talk about that later with my pick <laughs> okay oh okay okay yeah interesting okay um second question so max is now at 10 wins on the season the all times win record for a season is 13, set by, I believe, Michael Schumacher. Does Max break it? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, th I could see Max winning 14 races or at least tying it this season. I think, I mean, Max could go out there and win Coda for sure. I could see Max going out there and possibly winning this weekend at Monza. I don't think Max will win this weekend. I don't think he goes five in a row. But when you look at the races that we have coming up, we have Japan, where Max is good at. You could definitely see Max winning there. We have uh, Abu Dhabi. Um, well, even just with the Red Bull, he can win at any of these tracks. I'm just saying. Like, yes. Even just his driving ability, no. which he's a great driver. I'm not denouncing his driving ability. But no, but with he's just in the, the best Red equipment Bull. in F1. Yeah, I'm just saying. Yeah, <laughs> easily. I yeah. could see Max winning either tying Schumacher's record or beating it by one. I don't think he wins all of the final, what, do we have seven races left in the season? That's yeah. crazy. Dude, that flew yeah. by. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah. yeah, I think we could definitely see him winning four at least. And my fault, I forgot to put credit. I, put, I forgot to put respect on his name. Mr. Vettel has 13 wins in this season as well and tied Michael Schumacher. So, sorry. I had to put respect on Sebastian. The best. So, Mr. Uh, Blue Flags this past <laughs> weekend and all. Oh, yeah. Blue Flags! Blue Flags! <laughs> uh, that was my favorite. Oh, God. <laughs> okay, Daniel. Just screaming. Um, I think he could break it. I, I don't know if he will. 
again saying like I don't know if it will happen, but he could. Okay. He's been really dominant this season, and it's pretty much been like nobody else has really figured out how to combat that specific car. Yeah, and you know, Red Bull probably probably nailed the car, the new regulations this season. Just saying. So I don't know. Um, that they did. That's all I really got to talk about from this uh, weekend. So, um, yeah. Daniel, you want to talk about the Grand Prix of Portland, buddy? <laughs> Does he really Let's want to? Let's see. Okay. I'm starting the statement off the fact that I don't love Portland as a track in general. <laughs> I'm pretty open about I just think it's just a very mediocre track. Not a lot of passing. Um, the only thing that usually makes Portland good is the wrecks in turn one and two. But that only happens when it's a start or a restart. And guess how many yellow flags we had at this race? We had one. <laughs> and guess how many crashes in turn one and two we had? We had zero. Well, no. Rita's VK well, and Jimmy Johnson. Okay. On restarts, though. <laughs> On, like, starts, restarts. Right. Um, yeah, really, like, I'll Did say someone it. say... I'll say it. This Did somebody was... say Jimmy Johnson? Anyway. <laughs> okay. Okay, <laughs> but you know what, guys? I'll say it. It was the Don't first not entertaining IndyCar race. No! Um, oh, it's not like everyone else said that, too. Oh, my it God. Wasn't, like, it wasn't the worst race in the world. It was just... It just existed. I'd give it a 7.5. Oh, it was mid. Honestly. I, said, I gave it a 6. So, I'd give, give it, like... The only thing I'd that was interesting it about like it was the championship. Five. Yeah, that's the only it. thing that was interesting about it was yeah was just the fact that some people had better races than others, and the fact that like, Christian Lugard uh, ran into a like a barrier and then like drove it yeah. around the track for an entire. Hey, lap. you know yeah. what? He was able to he was able to keep it mostly like working until he could. Pick. Yeah, for real. So. I give him respect for that. Because however, that definitely not. screwed his chances for next weekend for rookie of the year. Because Speaking now, like, of would... five points, baby, five points. I have called since the beginning. David Malukas, rookie hey, of the year. Hey, I so... have called it. I have called it. For you can go back to the first episode of this entire <laughs> no, it is. show. You I you picked him. Called. I picked Kirkwood. I. I'm just called. saying. I'm just saying. In our like little TikTok we did for rookie of the year, I said. Oh, I'm, you I'm did not, say I'm not saying. Good. Yeah. I pick, I'm not saying said, that you didn't. No, no, no. I said, this is how I said, I predicted how it's happening. I said, I think Lungard will like, have the lead or like kind of take a take advantage, but I think David will figure it out. But I think I still ended up going with Lungard though. So I have called this since day <laughs> one. One. <laughs> Just like the one I, on his hat. I have, I have yeah. called this since day one. <laughs> I have been on the Malukas hype train since Indy Lights. I have called it, and I am going to be on another level if this man pulls us off. Yeah, five points. We're and gonna see Daniel in full Maluka gear, dude. I am gonna like ascend. <laughs> yeah, you're you're gonna hear some some angelic music, and I'm just gonna be like, Alexa, play so. Wolves by Kanye West. <laughs> <laughs> Playing Wolves yeah. by Kanye West. <laughs> but, but speaking of tight races, um, Scott McLaughlin won this race. This race was not tight. That's not. That was a bad transition. <laughs> that was, that um, was a little strange there. But speaking of what tight, I, what I was meant, what I meant to say. Speaking of tight races, the championship. Speaking of five, it's between five drivers. Yeah, it is. It's mathematically impossible for Alex Pelot to contend because he had a very off race. And it is now between Will Power, Joseph Newgarden, Scott Dixon, who is tied with Joseph Newgarden in points right now. Um, I found that interesting. They're both 20 points behind Will Power. Then we get Marcus Erickson, who is 30, 30, 37 or 47 points behind. Uh, 37, 37. 39? Yeah. 39. Sorry, I did math yeah. wrong. Um, and then Scott McLaughlin is 41. 41 points behind. So it's between five drivers. And first of all, I'm going to say, I think 
I think Joseph Newgarden's winning it. Ooh. Who do you guys think is going to be your IndyCar champion of 2022? I picked him at the beginning of the season. And I thought he'd have an off year because of last year. The, so, man, um, the man from Nashville, Tennessee, weighing in at, I don't know his weight, and I don't know his height. <laughs> Joseph <laughs> Newgarden. <laughs> Wait, <get it>. Wait. <laughs> I don't. If I can use oh, pause, you're like, "Wait, I went too far." <laughs> yeah, it was funny. Uh, yeah, my pick for champion. Uh, I think it's gonna be either Power or Dixon, but I picked it at the beginning of the season, guys. It's gonna be freaking Scott Dixon. I think Dixon wins this championship. Like, it's crazy how. Me and Jay, uh, like our guys have been pretty much in contention the entire time, and Daniel picked Colton Herta. Like it's crazy how like these things happen. And... <laughs> Who's going to F one? Who's going to F one? Who's going to F one? He's he's eighth care. in points. Who's going to Alpha Tori in F one, buddy? Yeah, who's going to Alpha Tori? I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> Watch it fall through, and then Nick Nick Latif. Oh, it's goes gonna to fall through. Nick well, no, because they they've said that if the deal doesn't go through, that they're just sticking with what they have. Yeah, they're yeah. sticking with Gasly. The only reason they're going to let Gasly go is if they're allowed to get her to. Um, but we don't have to get into that. Yeah. Um, so and then yeah, I'm picking you know, Dixon. Okay, so so me and Jay are both going new. <laughs> Nobody picked Power. The thing Nobody is, I, no, I said it. I think it, it's either because I have Power oh, and. Okay. Yeah, so I have Power and Dixon as my picks this weekend, and I think that it's going to be one of those two, but I'm going Dixon just because I picked him at the beginning of the season, but I'm also kind of picking Power just because I'm picking him to win. So, I mean, I just like... think Newgarden, outside of his, like, DNFs, has had the most impressive season. Yeah. Yeah, but... I mean, you have Will Power, who has been beyond consistent since week yeah, one. Yeah, no, I'm not. Obviously, he's had a great season. I'm not saying he had a bad season. I just don't think Will Power's going to win the championship, if that makes sense. Yeah, he, I like, I he's know. always consistent, but I don't know. There's a reason he doesn't have. Because he only has one championship, right? Well, yeah, he only has I one. I thought he has two. Does he have no, two? He has one. I think he only has one. Hold Let on. me check. I can check. I can check. Don't worry. Yeah, he's only Will got one. Power. Yeah, he's, he's, been, cha- he's been the championship runner-up four times. Oh, yeah. Geez. I thought he had two. Yeah, he's yeah. making that five. Interesting. Uh, I, like, again, great <laughs> driver. He obviously has proven he can win a championship, but there's just something about Joseph Newgarden and Scott Dixon being tied with points, only 20 points behind, that's really scary. Because we yeah, both know... Especially since we're going into both, double points. Both, yeah, and they're both multi-time champions, so we know they know how to drive under pressure in those last second thing. I mean, Joseph Newgarden came in second last year in the championship when he was having an abysmal year for his standards. Yeah. Actually. like See, that's what I'm saying, though. Like, If anything happens to Will Power this weekend... The championship is immediately in Scott Dixon or Joseph Newgarden's hands. Hey, don't push out Marcus Erickson and Scott McLaughlin. Or McLaughlin, yeah. Or McLaughlin. Yeah. Like, yeah. those, like, McLaughlin qualifies in the first three rows every freaking week. Marcus Erickson is so good at Laguna Seca. Like, you can't count out any of those five guys. I could literally see any of those five guys making a burger this weekend, and I could see any five of those guys ma- winning a championship. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate okay. that. Um, but I could see any of these guys winning the championship. And yeah, but if Scott – They're kind of far back, though. Like, they would – Double been points, a... though. The, it's double points oh, weekend. It doesn't right. matter. that's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. I forgot. That's why Pelot's not in contention. Oh, dang. I forgot. Okay. Okay, you're right. You're right. You're right. My bad. I forgot the final race is double points. My fault. My fault. Yeah. That's right, like so, we can see like Herta yeah. winning this weekend, <laughs> and we can literally see Herta winning this weekend and him going up to fourth in points. Yeah. Like like that like could just happen. Yeah. Dang. Well. No, that's not maybe sixth. Happen. Sixth at least, or maybe. Yeah, he's behind Pato Award by almost a hundred points. He's not shooting up the fourth. 
Yeah, you know. And like, uh, I'm a Hurta fan. I gotta be real. If he gets, if he gets a couple stage wins. Maybe. We'll I'm see. Not... I hope he can lock himself in the playoffs. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. there you go. Yeah, so I'm, I'm sticking Joseph Newgarden champion, David Malukas rookie of the year, both Penske guys in 2024. Thank you. I'll see myself out. <laughs> Mike drop. And as Daniel sees himself out, let's go ahead and transition. We got some predictions to do. Okay, guys, let's talk about the tracks we're going to. NASCAR. We got all three of the NASCAR Touring Series going to Kansas. We're second time this season we're going to Kansas. Uh, IndyCar, as we mentioned, is going to Laguna Seca. And F1's going to my dad's favorite F1 track. We're going Monza for the Italian GP. It's going to be a good one. Shout out Jerry Greider. <laughs> uh, but it's going to be a... It's going to be a good one. Let's go ahead and start with the truck series. Hold up, hold up. I'm we picking. Gotta talk, we got to talk about our predictions. Oh, that's right. Week. That's right. Talk <laughs> yeah, about yeah. last week. Yeah, 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 yeah. I knew something was wrong. Yeah. Talk about last week. I think you just don't want to. I, I got a point. <laughs> no, I'm just we playing. all got at least one point. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. But um, <laughs> so last week, Daniel took home the most points. Me and Tristan both took home one. Daniel took home two. He got his pick wet with pick right with Gragson. Um, I had Larson, which was right there at the end, but he decided that he wants to rub Sheldon Creed. So, um, take My that, guy didn't take even that, race. Take that how you will. But um, <laughs> yeah, I picked Hamlin. <laughs> I mean, I picked Hamlin, which pretty much I would have said if Bell would have won, I would have gotten a point because I picked the 18 car. But, like, but you picked still. Benny, not, you did not pick Bell. <laughs> And you then, picked like who did you didn't you pick Jack Wood earlier this year and he didn't even make the race exactly? <laughs> no, it was Tyler Ankrum. Thank you very much. I think you definitely. I think it was definitely Jack Wood. But all right. no, it was it was Ankrum at Daytona first race of the season. Oh, okay, <laughs> but or no, wait, no, it was Chase Purdy. It was Chase Purdy. Purdy. It was, it was yeah, one of the Tory picked, guys. Yeah. One of the Tory guys. <laughs> Chase Purdy and he didn't make the race. I remember that. But we all got a point for F1 by picking Max Verstappen. So thank Max, you, Mr. Max. Verstappen. Yeah, and so, uh, um, for the first time that he doesn't pick him this season, George Russell got another podium. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. But, Daniel, I was up two points on you. I'm now down, now I'm down to being up by, or how can I say that? I'm now up by one on you. It's 19 mm. to 18. Tristan has 15. So, Damn. Tristan, you're going to have to be solid this week, man. Because after, after this week, hey, I'm we being don't have consistent any like Graham Ray. I'm consistent like Graham Ray Hall. Like it's gonna, it's gonna happen. Because after this weekend, after hey, the- Graham finished <laughs> top ten this. Week. No, I'm kind of pissed this though. Because remember when I said I was? Remember last weekend how I said I was gonna pick Graham Ray Hall and then I backed out and then picked um, I forget who I picked. I think I picked Erickson. Um, last week I backed out. Graham Ray Hall yeah. ranked so much better than Erickson did last week. But yeah. like anyway, we'll that's power Marcus Erickson. That's who you had. But yeah. All right. So, all right. Let Let's talk ahead. trucks. Let me pull up this entry list right quick. Let's talk trucks, guys. My pick. Surprise, surprise. I already go put him down. Put down the 38 for me, Jay. I'm picking Zane freaking Smith. That's where I'm going. Z Smith, Bob, Daniel. Z, baby. All right. My pick. Yeah. Here comes. It's high time. 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 I'm going Corey Hunt. Time. time time baby interesting and it, i believe it was announced that he is going full time in trucks next season mm. i so, mean he better be he I'll better be i i am going to go with the other smith chandler chandler smith <laughs> all right xfinity all solid picks here yeah. xfinity? xfinity series i'm going with Joe Gibbs' grandson, because he's so good at this damn track, picking Tyler. Mike, Go ahead and get me Tyler Gibbs. Mike Tyson Gibbs. T.Y. <laughs> T- Gibbs. T.Y. Gibbs. Daniel. Gibby boy. Gibby. I'll pick Gibby. All right. Gibby. So, Gibby. for this race, for this race, I am going with the man who Jay does not think is making the Xfinity playoffs, but I think he is. I am going Sheldon Creed. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, for me. I thought you were about to say. I thought you were about to say whoever the heck is driving the big machine racing forty eight car. 
Who is even running the 48? Is it Chastain this weekend? Let it's me try. Yeah, it's Chastain. Okay, cool. That's who I thought it was. Raja yeah. Karuth is in the 45. In the 45. There's a lot of weird names in there. Nothing against Roger Carruth, but and that 45 is not going to get him. A yeah. Good good run. There's we, I can know you got a uh Howie DeSavino the third. I have never heard of yeah, him. Yeah, Howie DeSavino, he uh Dylan Bassett? What? I have never heard of these who's, people. Uh Howie DeSavino, he he's ran a couple races before. Yes. But Dylan Bassett, he's going to have to qualify in. Yeah. Um, Interesting. How do you uh, not is it have? My turn? Is it my? Oh, I'm gonna go Sammy. Smith. Yeah. Oh, good pick. That's a great pick, actually. Okay, cup. Uh, I'm jealous of that pick right there. <laughs> I mean, you can anyway, pick him too if you cup want. Cup series. I teased this pick earlier, and it's crazy because I have this guy not making it out of the round of 16, but just because he's so damn consistent on these kind of tracks, I'm picking Chris Bell. I think Christopher Bell could get a good run this weekend possibly lock himself into round of 12 and pick him in the 20 car and then give me a guy that's currently below the cut line that is so damn good at this track mr closer himself the happy man um mr not on fire anymore give me a (laughs) cage mr happy mr harvick mr happy mr harvick mr happy mr happy can i please uh get your autograph mr happy (laughs) okay all righty First pick, Joey Logano. Mm, Good pick. Interesting. Second pick. <laughs> second pick. Tyler Reddick. Let's go. Okay, I, okay. I I wanted I thought Kansas was gonna be where he got his first win. And it wasn't. But he's getting his third win there. Let's go. Damn, that's crazy. He's had two wins since then. Okay. I'm gonna go Tyler Reddick's first win on an oval. It better be. I thought it was gonna be this weekend. I'm go gonna ahead, I'm gonna go with Joey Logano, which I was going yeah. to choose him before Daniel said he was choosing him, but that's okay. Likely story, but that's Jay. A, that's okay, Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> um, but my second pick, I'm gonna go with mi amigo Daniel Suarez. Ooh, good pick. Um, no, <laughs> IndyCar. We have light lights. Races? How many races? We got two. There's two lights. Two lights races. Light races. The final two races to decide the light season. For race one, I'm going with the Stinger, Stingray Rob. That's my first pick. Um, for race one. For race two, though, I'm going with the champion. Give me Linus Lundquist. Linus Lundquist. Okay, Daniel. Linus sweep. He's going out on top. He's, he's good, bro. He's good. Hey, I got the stinger for race one, though. Man, Danny, you put me in a bad spot, bub. Put me in a bad spot. Oh, oh. Okay. What you gonna do, bud? Oh. <laughs> Copying you. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. <laughs> you doing Lena Sweep, too? Jay, Jay copies sweep. every pick I ever do for the rest <laughs> of the season just so I can't hey. mathematically win. Hey, do we want to do something fun for IndyCar this week? What's up? Double points oh, for so a two? double points weekend. So two? Yeah, so for IndyCar, for NTT, for NTT only, double points Okay. for a winner. So if so, I'm so picking, let's say let's say one of us, like one of our drivers wins the championship. Because technically, uh, from preseason, I want to say from preseason. Okay. But some preseason, I know, so I know, and, I know that. Herda is technically out of the situation. So, do we want to let Daniel get a pick? No. <laughs> okay. Okay. okay, I'm just saying. I'm just he's saying. leading. I'm just saying. Okay, so me well, and you. Actually, no, he's. Oh, Jay's. But, no, but me. Come on, Daniel. You picked Colton Herda. <laughs> okay, but do, do, I get a po- do I get a point if Malukas wins rookie of the year, though, at least, to be fair? Oh, okay. yeah. So, uh, I wanted to say, I wanted yeah. to say, when a driver wins the championship that we picked from preseason, <laughs> we get 10 points. Oh, I was gonna say that. Yeah. Okay, so, so if but Daniel, but Daniel, if David wins rookie of the year, you can have five. Okay. Sound good? Sound good? What? <laughs> You're gonna give all him five points from a Lucas? Well, okay, we came all. Before Kristen says no. <laughs> yeah, because we all we all had a good guess. You guys yeah. were just so so yeah. wrong. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you guys were just so so wrong. Yeah. Okay. 
I'll, I'll do that okay. because I think because if Dixon wins the championship, I get ten points. If Newgarden wins the championship, Jay gets ten points. But if we pick the race winner, we get two points. This two week. extra points. Yeah. 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 Okay. okay. So for my race picks, I have Will Power and Scott Dixon. Mm. Interesting. Okay, Daniel? I mean, we know who my first race winner is going to be. Y'all forgot whose track this is. Colton Herta, I believe, has never lost on this track. Okay. True. Well, Colton Herta is my first winner. Never... I was um, actually going to nominate Herta for a group pick this week. Nah, bro. I'm taking those points for myself. <laughs> um, wild card. You know? I'm going to go Scott McLaughlin. Mm. Good pick. Spice up the, the little points. Make things Crazy a little difficult. Though, that even if Scott wins the ch- the race, he might not win the championship. I mean, he's 40 points back. Yeah, I wasn't yeah. saying... That... I'm going safe because I want the two extra points. I'm just saying, I want those two <laughs> extra points as well as the 10. I'm going with Joseph Newgarden and Scott Dixon. Okay. I'm going defensive line in the turn one, bud. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> so, those are There's my no Ed Jones to mess up Pato Award this year. I was thinking about that. There is a Jimmy I, Johnson. <laughs> there is a Jimmy Johnson. There's Jimmy. But Jimmy went, Wait, but Jimmy, did somebody just say Jimmy? Uh, okay. <laughs> anyway. Okay. All right. Uh, F1. F1. Monza. P1. Monza. Third year in a row, we're getting a crazy Monza finish, and I can't decide whether or not I want my P1 and my P2 to be switched, so I think I'm just going to stick with how I have it written. P1, George Russell. Finished ninth year last year season in Williams. George Russell is my first pick. My uh, for P two. I think he goes back to back podiums at this track. Lando Norris. I have finishing P two. Yes, it's Monza. It's crazy things happen at Monza. And my P three is Max Verstappen. Interesting. Whoa. <laughs> okay. I almost had Lando Norris okay. winning this race. I'm not I mean, gonna hey, lie to you. Like I I'm was. Not judging. I'm not judging. I'm not. It's judging. Monza, dude. It's, it's, like we're yes. at Monza. This is, is the Monza. Talladega of F1. That's true. Like, this is Monza. That's true. Daniel. Do I want to go safe or do I want to be risky? <laughs> I don't think that hey, my picks hey. are honestly risky. I'm not gonna lie to you. Winner. P1. Max Verstappen. So he went. He went clean. P2. Lewis Hamilton. Ooh, okay. No way, no way you're about to pick P3. my same podium. You're not about to pick my same podium. Oh, I'm not. Because P3, I'm going to Esteban Ocon. Whoa! Okay, okay. Interesting. I like That's that. honestly That's not a bad... Like, I Esteban Ocon podium. podiums... Esteban Ocon podiums are not uh not like uncommon. Like yeah. that's gonna happen. Like I could definitely see, I'm kinda jealous that I didn't pick Ocon on my podium. I'm not gonna lie to you that. I can see that. I can't I, like as a guy mean, that's picked Ocon in his podium like three times this season and it hasn't happened, I really hope that Ocon gets a podium for you, Daniel. Like normally I would be like defensive about like why are you picking Ocon? But like right like since it's Monza, I'm just gonna be like, Okay, that's a good pick actually. So mm. but my podium is first Max Verstappen. Second, Lewis Hamilton. And third, Charles Leclerc. But do you want to know why I picked this podium? (laughs) Why is that? Because my girlfriend was playing the F1 game, and she ran Monza on a race. And that was the podium that came out, and she said I had to pick it, so I picked it. Shout out, Jackie. (laughs) Shout out, Jackie. Yeah. (laughs) Fun. Interesting that the game didn't didn't predict a Ferrari engine failure. (laughs) Hey, I don't just even saying. think I don't even think a normal person could predict that to be honest. So, hey, I'm just saying. Out of all of our predictions, we have five different teams getting represented on the podium this week, guys. We have McLaren, uh, Red Bull. Notice none of us pick Checo though. It's only Verstappen, yeah. uh, Ferrari, Mercedes, and Alpine. We yeah. all have those represented this week. That's pretty cool. But we still have one more very important pick, the group and that pick. is our group pick. And I'm gonna let Jay. 
decide oh, what race we have for the group pick this week. Because I was gonna say Colton Herta, but Jay, but Daniel's being a little butthole. Being, yeah, he's. <laughs> Dog, being a little I'm old. sorry that I picked him before we got to the group pick. Okay, we're going Spare. to go. <laughs> okay. It's Monzo. We're going F1. I'm just saying. <laughs> All right, bro. All right. Okay. Oh, man. Are we, are we? I don't think we've ever done an F1 group pick before. I honestly don't think we so, have it, so. We have it because we usually do the podiums, so there's like less names to choose from. Yeah. Yeah. True. So are we doing a group pick for a podium? Like it doesn't matter where he finishes on the podium? Just one or are we doing just a group one pick win? Just win. Just win. Okay. Just win. Who's one guy that we didn't? Unless you guys well, want to do none of us. Picked, unless you guys want to do none of us. None of us picked Checo. That's what I was thinking. That was actually none of us picked Carlos Sainz either. Or George True. Russell. I picked George Russell. He's on. He's he he's my winner. Oh shoot! You did. My bad. Okay. Yeah. I didn't even pay attention. Yeah. Or I think since it's Monza, do we want to go a weird one? Let's go Bottas. Nick Latifi. Bottas. Nah. Not, why would I pick Latifi? <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna, say, I was gonna say Alonzo, but like go off. But like go off. Nah, I don't think Alonzo would get. I'm there. between Perez, Sainz, and Alonzo, and then I'll even toss in Bottas. Just saying. Nah, Bottas has retired the last four races. It's not gonna be Bottas. It's Monza, bro. It's so Monza. which one of those three? Which one of those three? I'm gonna. I'll nominate Checo. Hold up. Hold up. All right, I'm thinking of a number one through three, okay? Well, so, all right, all right, this is how I'm going to do it. This is how I'm going to do it. So, Signs is one, Checo's two, and Alonzo is three. Remember that, right? Hey, Siri, pick a number one through three. A random number between one and three is two. We're going Checo. It's Checo, baby. <laughs> That's good. I respect it. Appreciate Siri for the support there with the group oh, yeah. pick. Oh yeah. <laughs> she threw that. I threw the alley oop. Just saying. Throw that alley oop. Yeah. All right, guys. Okay. Those are our picks for the final IndyCar weekend of the season. It's been a great IndyCar season, guys. I cannot believe it's already at the end. It's, it's September. Like it's September. Like Wake we've been talking up. about IndyCar since January. We've been doing this show for eight months, dude. Like crazy. it's crazy. It's almost the twenty first night of September. What? <laughs> but it's crazy. Uh but yeah guys, it's gonna be it's cool. It's cool. It's cool. It's fun. Alright, let's close it out. All right, guys, before we close out this episode, I just want to mention uh, something I saw on Twitter this week. Um, so shout out to at NASCAR Tyler one. I saw him post this on uh, his Twitter account. It's the best of the rest standings. Jay's going to put a little uh, um, screenshot, I guess, of what this uh, picture is. But it's the best of the rest standings following race one at Darlington. And what it is, it's drivers that are 17th to 32nd in the NASCAR Cup Series playoffs and it's pretty sweet because it has Eric Jones like advancing to the round of six like advancing to the round of 12 which is pretty sick and then it has Truex, Wallace, Almarola, Kurt Busch and Ty Gibbs, McDowell, Keselowski and then it has like four guys eliminating it but I got very much so like March Madness NIT vibes in this one I don't know about you guys but I just thought it was pretty funny and uh, pretty sick so shout out to him I just liked it uh also it's yeah it's right pretty now. sick guys yeah like that's so cool uh right now it says like he has four guys like outside the playoffs with joy gillen stenthouse and cody Ware. like it's cool to see who's going to be the championship of the true best of the rest standings and that'd be sick if this could actually be adapted um to like the whole vibe that nascar could do that's pretty sick that'd be pretty cool i'm not, I'm not gonna lie that'd be pretty cool. but okay Yep. All right. And I just want to shout out a couple websites we do every week. Shout out to burnoutsports.com. You guys can check out all of our stuff and more on um, on their website. Plus, you can check out Tony Donahue and Luke Edwards' amazing podcast. Check out the marionphoenix.com, guys. That's where I do all my editorial multimedia stuff for college. It's where the show originated, guys. 
hit him with that. Bow, 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 bow. And also, IndieBoysMerch.com. Get your merch. Use your promo code IndieBoys, guys, if you guys want to get 10% off your order. You heard it here first. Promo code IndieBoys. Get yourself some certified hats, some Indie Boys shirts, some Malukas Mania shirts. It's going to be lit. And signing off for Daniel Cheney and Justin Cox. My name is Tristan Greider. Christian Rasmussen, guys, is still playing Minecraft. Have a good one. Peace! <laughs>